Hello everyone, welcome to Property Zone Live, powered by IQI Global. My name is Sean, I'll be the moderator for today. Today we are very honoured to have very uh, honoured guest speakers. Uh, on my immediate left, we have Ashley. Uh, we also have Harris. Okay. The topic for today will be investment trend for this year, 2019. Alright, uh, if you want to have a PDF format of whatever we have conversed today, type I love property in your comment, okay? Mm. So that we will PM the PDF copy to you. And today we also have a lucky prize. The lucky prize for today is actually a 20 liters sharp microwave. I heard you can put a whole cow inside, right? Uh, how to walk away with this? Basically, you just have to answer a question. The question is actually, is 2019 a good year to buy property? and why. So the one who actually uh, give the best answer will walk away with 20 liter sharp microwave. Okay, without further ado, I want to kickstart the session today, all right? Investment trend in year 2019. I would like to kickstart the questions uh, by asking Harris on my far left. Let me do a brief introduction for Harris. Harris actually started as a banker. He actually helped clients by giving a lot of advisory uh, in terms of wealth planning, investment planning to his previous clients. Subsequently, he became a, a real estate negotiator. He also helped numerous clients to secure their property. All right. Let me ask you, Harris. We have come to the uh, the beginning of the second quarter of two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. But I just want to rewind things a bit mm -hmm. backward. Can you summarize what has uh, happened in the year of two thousand eighteen last year in terms of Malaysia property market? Can you share some thoughts? Reverse, please. Sure. Actually, uh, the key question we should ask: uh, Why do we need this information? I think because it's very crucial to know the market trend before you enter a property market. Because I believe that the market actually works in a cycle, right? There's always a buy and a sell point, so it's very important. So last year, uh, if you everyone read the newspaper, you might heard Uncle Auntie say also same thing. You know, last year property market is slow, and it does. You, you, why is because actually last year, um, basically the property market, the demand is trying to absorb all the excess supply in the market. Yeah, and actually, why does this thing happen? Uh, we can actually look back six to seven years ago, where it's at the year of two hundred one two. That is when uh, actually our property growth was double of our average, and because of that, a lot of developers actually want to tap into the market and create a lot of these high rises, um, high, those uh, high end segment properties because the margin is very high. Yeah. So now after four or five years, you can see a lot of these properties completed and this is where the asset supply came. Yeah. So um, it's very important for us to know this info because this year um, actually is more of a supply corrective cycle. Supply corrective cycle, yes. Yeah. So in this sort of market, usually we'll notice three things. Okay. Uh, of course, um, you can see a lot of this property market is undervalued from the market, especially the properties. And secondly, is, um, you can see that a lot of these investors are going to rentals market for those they are holding. Mm -hmm. And of course, thirdly, the most obvious one, you can see a lot of developers right nowadays are giving a lot of like promotion and freebies, right? Yeah. So this is the, the sign of uh, I mean, I would say the trend of two one. So this has happened in the year of 2018, right? Okay, yes. there's a conclusion what happened. So how about this year, 2019? We just concluded our first quarter. And uh, I think many of you would like to find out what are the things we should look for? What are the factors we should look into mm -hmm. that will affect the Malaysian property landscape mm. this year? Of course, um, as mentioned previously, uh, you can, based on the three trends that we see, like um, rentals market is going to be bigger this year, all right? And secondly, of course, um, you can see that the supply of the market has driven a lot of these property prices below market value. And thirdly, of course, as I say, is, um, you can see that um, a lot of developers are giving a lot of new freebies. So what the implication for this year will be, of course, if you are a new investor or you're planning to enter to the market, all right. It's very important to know one thing. I think um, holding strategy is more important than buying strategy now, right? Because as long as yeah, you can get a good location, 
Okay, what lies next is basically how you're going to manage the property. All right, I think this will be a lot of investors or first-time home buyers focus for this year. Right. Okay. So uh, if time permits, maybe let me share with you what I think can be the two methods that you can start. Uh, I mean, looking into property, especially for this year, in terms of strategy-wise. Okay. So for those that uh, wanted to tap into these undervalued properties either sub-sales or those completed projects, I think it's a very good way because um, what I would suggest is you can actually use um, bank loan to take advantage of this by either you can cash out, which means that let's suppose the market value is here and the bank loan valuation is here, which means you're buying below the market value. You can cash out the difference, okay, taking cash out and perhaps you can consider to do a better furnishing of the house so that you can rent it at a better price. Okay. That's one way. Secondly, uh, if you look at uh, new projects, so for those that are looking for uh, your first house or new projects, what you can do is basically you can look for properties that provides you uh, like fully furnished concept. All right, what does it mean fully furnished? It simply means that the house already comes with a fixed uh, furniture and all that. So you don't have to spend your cash on the property in terms of renovation. Of course, the cost will be uh, priced in into the uh, house price already but you can at least use the loan all right to finance it so that it can help you to lengthen the expense up to 35 years if suppose it's a maximum <coughs> loan term you know? so it can help you to reduce your cash flow burden because you're going to rent it out anyway right so that would be my point of view for this year in terms of how you can go into the market Thank you for your feedback. For those of you who just joined in, okay, if you would like to have a PDF format of whatever we have conversed today, yes. type I love property. Share it so that your friend can benefit also. Yes. And also I for those of you who just joined in, just to let you know that today we actually have a lucky prize. The lucky prize is actually a sharp 20 liter microwave. So how to walk away with this? Basically, just answer the questions. Is 2019 still a good year to buy property? If mm -hmm. it is why give us a reason right the the win, uh, the person who come up with the best answer will walk away with this microwave right mm. so uh before letting you go now harris just want to ask you a very simple question is buying cheap still a strategy for 2019 <laughs> yes no why um of <coughs> course uh, i believe yes it still works of course it okay. depends on a lot of other factors and most primarily is the timing like, is very important and also the opportunity right so a lot of people want to go into this market especially we're talking about just now as i mentioned undervalued properties but you have to understand most of these properties either is completed or could be sub sales all right most of it like, i'll put it this way so you have to uh, take in consideration of the cost involved to buy these sort of properties either first you have to ha at least have a buffer in terms of cash flow because you're going to require to pay a heavy amount upfront, like down payment, legal fees, and all. What's the percentage people should, should prepare? Let's say if I'm buying a six hundred thousand, even though it's <laughs> undervalued, let's say you agree to let go at six hundred thousand. How much percentage I should be prepared, or they should be prepared? I mean, <clears throat> to put it simple terms, let's suppose as you mentioned six hundred thousand. Uh, I think the cash flow you have to at least prepare. Of course, firstly, the down payment ten percent, so that will make it sixty thousand, right? Subsequently, you have to factor in the legal fees, all right, and the stamping fees, the MOTs, plus renovation costs. And usually, how I advise my customer is, you allocate almost a similar amount as the down payment. So let's suppose sixty thousand is the down payment. <coughs> you just allocate another sixty thousand. So we're looking at the total lump sum of hundred and twenty thousand, right? I think the key question should be, I think if you are safe enough, if you have this cash flow, should not be an issue. I think the concern will be after that, how you're going to manage it. I think a lot of customers has been asking me, especially on this part. And I think one thing you have to take note, the market is only this big right now. It's fixed already. Okay. So how are you going to uh, overperform or over, you know, perform the normal average rental return? Outperform. I would say outperform, correct. So how do you outperform the rentals market is you have to differentiate yourself. What do you mean by differentiation? Okay. Could be either uh, you pay a bit more, Okay, either you secure a very prime location or usually we call it the central business district like KLCC and all that. Another way is you just spend more on doing the furnishing. Of course, now people uh, living quality is higher, so their 
condition could be or their requirement could be different already. So you have to match that. And of mm. course, thirdly, you want to tap into outsider market. You can consider doing short term rentals like Airbnb mm. could be one of the ways. Mm. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for your feedback. Sure. All right. So now we have come to the session for our second speaker, Ashley. So let me just give a brief introduction about Ashley. It's all the information is in my phone, right? Ashley actually is a champion for head of team in uh, company IQI in the year of 2018. He's also the youngest head of team in IQI, leading 600 members in five regions. That's inspiring. Also, I property most inspiring real estate woman in 2018. Don't forget, 100 most influential young entrepreneur 2017. All right, so I'm sure you are excited like me to hear more from Ashley, yeah. right? So, Ashley, do you mind to share with us? Uh, I heard that you have joined the property market uh, as a real estate negotiator since nine years ago. I think you have witnessed what has gone on in the past eight, nine years. Yeah. Can you share with us more about your journey? Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and um, yeah, I've been this line for about like eight, nine years. I remember back then I joined in the year of 2011. So just like Harris mentions that, you know, during that time, you know, it's actually a property market booming and then it's, mm. you know, all the transaction is double. So I'm actually uh, entering at the right time and um, I would say that it's really exciting at that time because that, um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, projects right that you know a lot of buyers they start to buy the mm. property even though they need to fork out for about hundred thousands they still they just buy they don't even really like you know think a lot that time is because of it's a developer market it's a developer market mm. so we don't have much of the you know the selection about the option so people just buy it like this i still remember back then you know i I wanted to buy a property and uh, I issued six check, you know, just to get the selective uh, from the developers to choose, uh, to, to, to choose, to, for me to choose the units, mm. all right? But the problem is, you know, why I want to issue six check is because that, that it is a balloting, balloting system. Mm. So, you know, that kind of market, you know, so good and yet there's a balloting system, that's why by end of the day, guess what? Um, I fail to get any unit because I'm not select. Oh. Uh, even though I give six, I issue six checks. All right. So, um, but for now these days, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, buyer come to me or even my friends. They ask me mm. um, since there's a lot of like surplus, yeah. you know, surplus for the properties uh, in the market right now. What what is my opinion? Personally, think that you know, it is not it is not because that the market not good it is actually because that um a lot of uh, buyers right they have they can they the info in the market right now because of we are in a digital era mm. and people can access to all the info so they <coughs> are further with all the info uh, through many channel especially the social media you see example we have a lot of agent let's say one buyer they deal with three agent yeah. but one agent they, they have proposed three property meaning that one buyer have to filter two layer mm. have to filter one uh, have to filter agent first which one that i need to look for then when i look for one agent i still have to filter another layer i have to choose which project that i prefer mm. this is actually reason why that they are delaying on the transactions mm. okay one of it and second thing is because uh, you know at in the year of 20 uh, 2011-2012 uh, my buyers right anytime they want to buy they can you know two days they can get loan transaction they can get loan approval but you know at these two years the transaction has been going slow mm. it's because that the bank the rules the rules and regulation getting more tightened so that the banks right they they need more supporting document from the buyers and this because of the because of these two uh you know factors that you've been delaying of the transactions so this is what i see but in this year if people ask me like whether is is the right time for them to buy property i would say that last time is a developer market but now it's a buyer market because there's a lot of project you know outside there and there is a very attractive package by the developer so for buyers who you know want to buy property right now um i would say that is it's the right timing 
is the right timing. And um, and um, talking about a lot of uh, these uh, buyers, right? They actually want to buy property, just that they they didn't manage to find the right person, you know, the right right property to go in into the market. Mm, yeah, mm. that's okay. the reason. Yeah. Okay. Hi, for those of you who just tuned in, don't forget to type I love property so that you will have a PDF copy of what we have conversed today, alright? Also, if you want to walk away with a sharp 20 litre microwave, answer this question, is 2019 still a good year to buy property? Mm. Tell me the reason why, alright? We will pick the winner based on the best answer, alright? Let's come back to Ashley. Ashley, now, talk we past eight nine years we all heard about your experience what you have witnessed mm-hmm. now Ariel, this year 2019 do you think it's still a good time for someone to embark to kickstart a career in property industry why because we want to answer because of leading uh you know, 600 strong agents yeah. i'm sure you have deal with uh, many people and then is this year a good year for people to kickstart the property industry of course um because for me, I would think that you know um, the opportunity is everywhere right now uh, because uh, there's a lot of buyer they're still buying. Just that um, why some of the buyer you know they haven't start to make the decision mm-hmm. yet is because that they can't find a right a real estate consultants to consult them, yeah, mm-hmm. to guide mm-hmm. them to find the right properties. So to me, because at this time, a lot of people ask me whether, you know, now is it a bad time of the property market? Mm. To, to me, it's not about bad time. It's about the, you know, the opportunity for you, you know, to grab some units or not. So at this time, uh, people who want to, you know, the buyers who want to buy, so they look for the right, buy, right agents, mm. right? So I know that the real estate agent, they can actually, when they, if, if they start now, they can learn a lot more. They can learn about their knowledge, about the experience, and then you know, because they, uh, in this kind of market, we the mark the 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 market is actually require the real estate agents to equip with more knowledge, okay. to equip with more uh, experience, you know, so that they can actually share more with to the all the investor or the home buyer. Hmm. So, so so if let's say during this time and the buy the agents right they learn to how to you know to handle all the objections to you know to sell the project i would say that when when the cycle turned to you know a good timing maybe back to 2011 2012 the the real estate agents they can actually earn double or triple so can i put this in summary if you can grow in tough time you'll flourish in good time yeah you are right so huh? yes okay. so I think there are some people perceive property industry as mm. high risk or hard work but high reward. Mm. They also believe that it's good but maybe not everyone can make it. Yeah. So based on your exposure, based on the people that, you not know, the agents they interact with, tell us what it takes to make it successful in property industry. Um, to me, uh, I would like to summary is, is one word with attitude. Attitude. Yeah. So if no matter today we are in, you know, in uh, in any industry, mm. include real estate industry, as long as they have a really good mindset with a good attitude, right, they will success. For example, I have uh, because uh, in my own wing, I have so many people who join me. So I have uh, people who are just eighteen years old. I even have the youngest one, 70, 71 years old who join me. <laughs> so these people, I see their growth for, uh, you know, for these two years, three years, four years. So how they, to me, it's not about, you know, it's not about whether you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, or maybe because of your background or the age. Because I also started very young. And uh, what actually I, I, I see in it is, in order to be success, it's all about the attitude. Mm. If let's say they really, you know, they're willing to learn and then, you know, they put themselves really humble. So they always, you know, be very disciplined. Because real estate now, we don't have, we don't have, you know, um, we don't have a, a, a what's so called, a, a timing that we need to clock in and clock out. So yeah. it's actually very flexible. So. Yeah. 
for agents, right, what they need to do to be successful is they have to be disciplined. They have to be have a clear goal, you know, mm. to focus on what they do. Because for us, right, we have a lot of opportunity and we get distracted sometimes. So my suggestion is if let's say we have a clear goal, we be really focused on it mm. so that the the people, right, in real estate industry, they can really earn. To me, uh, a real estate agent is not to be here to earn for a living. They are here to earn for a fortune. So oh, okay. real estate That's can really earn yeah. a good money here. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I, of course I encourage, you know, at this time there is uh, it is because of buyer market and people still buying. Yeah. So that's why I suggest that, you know, for those people who are interested to be a real estate consultant, yes, they can actually, you know, start start to, you know, to uh uh, inquire for this industry and join first then only you know sometimes it's about experience if we let's say we always listen to other people right we don't know whether is it the the right thing or not might as well we personal come and experience first mm, yeah okay All right. because i think eventually if you are in property industry uh, you learn it from business point of view yeah. but eventually you want to buy a house you also learn it from a property buyer point of view i think yeah. this Never be a wrong yeah. reason to join property industry unless you decide not to buy any more house. Yeah, that's mm. one of the reasons. Uh. <laughs> one of the reasons that I join uh, real estate is because that I want to be a property investor. Okay. Yeah, so that's the reason why I join real estate. And of course, along the years, right, for these eight years, I've been, uh, of course, that I buy some properties and then, you know, I feel on my property investment as well. But I still, you know, I mean, it really um, persistent and really I believe like because I know that properties right is one thing that we can actually earn for a uh, for a good return. So it's not about short term; it's all about long term. So let, let me ask a question from the audience on behalf of the audience: How many have you bought? Uh, all right. And uh, so far, right, I have a goal. I have a goal. I wish that every year I can one I can own one property. So uh, I joined for about eight years plus, and I actually own like about eight long eight properties. We will come back and interview her again when she's forty. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Empire, right? yeah. So uh, we have come to the ending part of our session for today. Thank you for uh, tuning in. For those who just missed out uh, what we have conversed uh, at the beginning part, type I love property in your comment. Then subsequently, then uh, we will send a PDF format of whatever, you know, the summarized version of us, uh, of the conversation or email to you. And if you want to walk away the lucky prize for today, which is a sharp 20 liter microwave, Ask, tell us, tell us, answer this question. Is 2019 still a good year to buy property? Give us a reason why. The person with the best explained reason will walk away. We'll announce the winner by early next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.